Come on and put your hands together. We're here to talk about a great God who's doing great things. I see him doing great things for you. We are in a great season. Come on, great God. Great God, great to He is marvelous. He is marvelous. Come on, great God. Wonderful. He is wonderful. He's doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing in my life. Ah, put them together, put them together. He's doing a new thing in my life. I'm all brand new. He's doing a new thing in my life. He's doing a new thing in my life. He's doing a new thing in my life. Come on, let's take it back. Great God. Great God. Great me. He is marvelous. excited we ended up having a time in the Lord our last night with our prelate none other than Bishop Dr. George E. Butts he brought a mighty word from God and on this evening hear me when I say this this is the last night you do not want to miss out on this evening none other than Pastor Jonathan McKnight he is the eighth wonder of the world when he comes into this house he shakes it up I want you to join in with us. We are looking for a high time in God. He's going to bring that word and it's going to bless your soul. Tune in right now. God bless you, New Heart Ministries. We are certainly glad to be on the last night of Holy Convocation 2020. Come on, lift up a praise in your house at this time. All over Facebook land, God is worthy to be praised. God is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, he's doing a new thing in our lives. Let us open up tonight with my hands lifted up. And my mouth filled with praise. Come on, everyone, everywhere, with the heart of thanksgiving. And I will, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Come on, lift up those hands in your houses at this time. With my hands lifted up. Oh, and my mouth filled with praise. Oh, come on and bless him. With the heart of Oh, 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 come on, everybody say, I will bless, I will bless thee, all. Oh, I will bless thee, oh, Lord. Hallelujah, with the heart of thanksgiving, the heart of thanksgiving. Come on, I will bless With the heart of thanksgiving. Oh, I will bless thee, oh Lord. Say it again, I will bless thee, oh Lord. Hallelujah, I will bless thee, oh Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving. 
thanksgiving I will bless I will bless the all Hallelujah with the heart of thanksgiving Hallelujah he is awesome in the place I will bless thee heart of thanksgiving with the heart of thanksgiving I will bless I will bless thee oh Lord everybody let me hear you say yes we're getting ready to pray yes mm-hmm. yes hallelujah oh yeah Everyone in the Facebook land, come on. Yes, thank you, Lord. Give them a praise for what is done. Come on, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, oh, my. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank complication in the house. Thank you, Lord. He's been good. Has he been good to you? Come on. He's been good. Hallelujah. He's been good. Oh, oh my. He's been good. Come on, give him a praise in the house. We're getting ready to pray. Thank you, Jesus. We're such a witness that he's been so good. Hallelujah. God, you are such a good God. We honor you tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, do a great and mighty work in this place. We thank you for the man of God that is coming forth to bring your word. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you are doing such a powerful, powerful thing this week, Lord, in the name of Jesus over this convocation. God, we pray that hearts are healed, bodies are healed, minds are restored. Father God, and families are united in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that we know that hearts in the name of Jesus are being turned around, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and they're returning to you in Jesus' name. Father God, get your glory on tonight. Father, we pray right now that, Lord, all things according to the word of God, will be settled right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we destroy the works of the enemy, Father God. It's you first, God. We thank you, Lord, that we center things all around the word of God in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, and we pray right now that you would get your glory in this service. Move in a mighty way. Heal, set free, and deliver in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. We thank God for the prayer. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our scripture from Deacon Price. The scripture lesson comes from Philippians, second chapter, the fifth through the eleventh verse. Make your own attitude that of Jesus Christ, who existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be used for his own advantage. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a slave, make taking on the likeness of men. And when he had come as a man in his internal form, external form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. For this reason, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, the word of God for the people of God. The word is blessed. We serve a great God, and He is a great God forever.
about you tonight, but I'm enjoying myself. And Holy Convocation 2020. I just feel like singing one of these good old sanctified songs. Just help me out for a few moments. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. Come on. I know he's done for me. Oh, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. I thank God for saying. Let's say it again. When I think, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, oh, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Come on, saints. Come on and testify to tight. I thank God. Be glad about it. I thank God for saving me. Oh, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God. Pick up those tambourines in your home set. I thank God for saving me. I thank God for saving me. Oh, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God. Just say it one more time. Oh. Oh, my soul cries out, hallelujah, I thank God for saving me. Hallelujah, put your hands together. Just tell your neighbor at your house and say, neighbor, tell him I thank God for saving me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. At this time, we're having such a wonderful time in the Lord. And I'm going to bring up none other than our shepherd, our leader, chief overseer, Bishop George Eddie Butts at this time. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, look at somebody and tell them God has better for you. Come on, tell them God has better for you. Tell them what else? He's able to do it. God bless you. God bless you. We are blessed tonight to have an awesome and blessed speaker to be here with us. Before we move, I want you to hit that share button now. Tonight, tonight we want to have over 1,000 views or more. Tonight, this is the night God has sent a word for you tonight. God has sent a preacher to preach a word to us tonight. Amen. Dynamic preacher. TV personality we thank God for him tonight coming every year this man of God this pastor I call him Bishop amen don't get him in trouble but amen just the qualifications and his spirit that God has blessed him with all the way from sanctuary of praise to come to take time out to preach to us tonight you by popular demand you, you, you beg me every year to bring him back and we have him here tonight. And I want you, don't cheat him tonight. Somebody all over the world needs to hear this word tonight. Amen. Hit that share button. Call your friends and tell them to share this tonight. And we thank God for this preacher. Amen. We thank God for the convocation this 2020. Amen. God has blessed us all week. It has been anointing in this building. And we are thankful. We're not going to prolong the time now. It's time for the word of God. Amen. Whatever you need from God, you ought to be praying now that he will send the word to you tonight. We want you to stand to your feet at this time. Even in your homes, stand where you are and receive the man.
say praise the Lord right now can somebody say praise the Lord right now I want you wherever you are as it's been for said tag somebody Facebook live tag somebody YouTube right now we're gonna believe God for great things I am excited about this opportunity to this special chief angel of this house give it up for the apostle chief apostle and bishop Bishop George but let's give God praise for the woman of God first lady and the entire New Heart family. Come on, let's give it up right now and believe that God's gonna do great things. I'm excited. You might be seated in the presence of God. I want you to know that I, I just honor um, Bishop Butts and I, I'm just telling you right now, he has to know that he's a very special place, a person, a place in my heart, New Heart Ministries. I'm just blessed to be here tonight and those of you who are watching my way of Facebook and YouTube, I just want you to know that this is a God-given assignment. I say this, a God-given assignment. Something is going to happen for you on this Friday. I want to tell you now, it's Good Friday night. And it's not even Resurrection Weekend. But then again, it is Resurrection Weekend. I believe in God that something is going to revive and resurrect in you over these next few moments. So I want you to right now start giving God a praise right there in your home, wherever you are, and bless him like something is about to happen. Uh, I feel it already. 
I want to get ready to have a word of prayer. I'm going to read the scripture and we're going to believe that God is going to do things. I don't want you to be distracted. I want you to make it up in your mind that right now God is going to do something great for you. I'm honored tonight to be at this holy convocation. I'm still trying to figure out how I end up coming back over and over, but Bishop don't give me much of a chance. He's the only one I know that will book you before you leave for the next year. So we're just excited about that. I want to read something to you uh, through the word of God and, and uh, knowing that we're in that season. We're in that season from the book of Philippians, the third chapter. And the word says, I want to read this to you from verse 10. Philippians 3 and 10 says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death if by any means I might obtain unto the resurrection of the dead not as though I had already obtained either were already made perfect but I follow after that I may apprehend for that which also I am apprehended of Christ Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. I'm forgetting those things which are behind me, and I'm reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press, even if you don't, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Father, these next few moments, I want you to bless this word. Let it reach. Let it change. Let it save. Let it rejuvenize. Let it, let it revive. And I thank you right now for this man of God and this great ministry, his family. And I ask you, God, to allow revelation and the power of the Holy Ghost to preach these next few moments. Satan, you're already defeated. And I decree right now that every demonic force around anybody's house window doorway family i decree that the blood of jesus had put up a blood wall now i thank you right now that somebody gonna get hit by the holy ghost in their house and we speak that it's already done in jesus name we pray amen i come tonight just to take a few moments to be able to share with you from this thought pushing for the power pushing for the power question now becomes as I start out I want to really ask you a question uh, tonight and that is what are you pushing for yes, sir. some people are pushing for a stimulus check some people are pushing for a job yes, sir. some people are pushing simply for survival yes, sir. we have a political agenda around the world we have political parties and they are pushing for something the Republicans are pushing. The Democrats are pushing. The Liberal Party, the Tea Party, the Coffee Party, and everybody else is pushing for something. The truth of the matter is everybody seems to be pushing for something. And the question now becomes is what are you pushing for and who is pushing you? The question now becomes not only what are you pushing for, but who is pushing you and why? Yes, I come to deal with the mindset of the agenda of motive. Uh -huh. Most people that push has a reason to push. Am I talking to anybody now? Most people push for something that might not even have nothing to do with you, but they know you got the goods to get it done that you need to understand the reason why the enemy fights us so hard is because the devil does not want anybody that God doesn't love You've been wondering why the enemy keeps messing with you. There are plenty of billionaires, there are trillionaires, and there are people that go around the world and they have plenty more money, they're in the best spell of financial situation, but the enemy wants to mess with you because there's something in you that he knows he can't snatch unless he push you the wrong way. Am I talking to anybody now? And I'm somebody been wondering, why are we going through such a season now, Bishop? Why are we going through this season? We are in a season by which the world has never seen. 
When you even look in the biblical text, there will have been times that even in Egypt, when the Lord had to deal with Moses and had to deal with Pharaoh, he just dealt with the plague in Egypt. Uh, the pestilence was just in a particular area, but we're dealing in a season now to where God is trying to speak to the whole world all at the same time. And somebody been asking the question, what is the purpose of this? And why are we going through this season? Why is God allowing us to go through times like this to where the world is affected? Because he's trying to see what you are pushing for. Yes, sir. And many of us are pushing for an agenda. But at the end of the day, you got to understand that we got to push for the power. Yeah. I wish I had somebody willing to push yes, for the power. Sometimes I want you to understand this and I'll be out of your way soon. Sometimes we understand that when God wants to do something great in our life, he has to shut down something else that you've been pushing for. So many times we have gotten distracted by things in life and we know that the base scripture is behold, I'll do a new thing. But sometimes we got to understand what does the new thing do for you? So many people are pushing for a new thing, but I'm trying to be confused by some people pushing for the new thing, but they never completed the old thing. Come on. And sometimes God will allow us to go through some changes to see what will you push for when chaos hits your house. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, God, I, I, I'm finding out that right now I'm looking and so many people are questioning what season are we in? What, what's the state of the church? And God obviously wanted to test the kingdom. He wanted to test the kingdom to say, well, when what used to work don't work. Mm -hmm. Some of you got to learn how to now worship in your house. You were so used to complaining about the praise team. How you didn't feel nothing when they was worshiping. Now you got to feel it for yourself. I wish I had somebody here understand. So you used to be willing to call the prayer line and get prayer. And then go right back to doing what you were used to doing. Because you was comfortable having somebody pray for you. But now you're in a season where you got to push for yourself. Am I talking to anybody right now? You got to understand that the new thing is great as long as you pushing it with power. You can't get a new thing with old power. The Lord told me, he said, so many people trying to get new things, but they're trying to use the same old power. You, you can't go to another level with the same level of power. So many times I'm thinking about the kingdom now and where we are, Bishop, and it's, it's really been one of the greatest tests to me of the church. Uh -huh. It's really about your personal relationship with God. Amen. You, you can't just blame someone else for your weakness. Come on. Yes, there, we, we just starting back some things, but you used to be distracted by sports. God said, I'll shut down the NBA, the NFL, baseball, and everything else and see what you will push for. I ain't got nobody talking to me right now. You used to go into the movie theaters. Oh, Lord. You used to be in on the weekend. There were many people used to go into the clubs and the bars. God said, I'll close the club and I'll close the bar to see what you will push for. I wish I had somebody understand that it's just not enough to be able to say you are a member of a church. It's not just enough for you to be able to have a spiritual title because a title don't give you power. Well, I know somebody done shut me off. Come right back on to Facebook and YouTube. The title don't give you power. A title does not qualify you to shift for the new thing. If you're going to have the new thing in your life, you got to have a new mind. Yeah. You got to have a desire for things that are more important than what makes you look like you have power. Yeah. The world now, the Lord is dealing with the economy system. He's dealing with the job system. He's dealing with everything that affects us to see what is our behavior going to be. On, He's literally purging us from religiosity. We compliment Bishop for having this virtual conference and see sometimes you got to understand this holy convocation is to see if you are still watch or are you just a live church actor. I ain't got nobody going to help me. A live church actor will not watch unless they in the building but if you have a real relationship with God you don't need a crowd to get power. 
And sometimes you got to make it up in your mind that I got to push for the power. Yes. Now pushing for the power is not always easy. Because when the enemy knows that you have to push for power, it means that now you got to take advantage of social distancing. Uh -huh. Lord have mercy. Yes. Because social distancing has been some of our reason for staying weak. Mm -hmm. Because we have associated ourselves with people who have names but they don't have power. Lord have mercy. We have to get to the point now in the kingdom of God and I have to say this to where the focus, Bishop, a word I haven't heard a lot since this pandemic is Holy Ghost. Come on. Wow. Yes, sir. Lord have mercy. Yes, sir. Right. You better wear your mask. You better sanitize your hands. Come on, bring it up. But you better have the Holy Ghost. Yes. Somebody don't want to hear that word now. The Holy Ghost is the power of God that lives inside of you that enables you to push in a pandemic. Yes, sir. Lord have mercy. People are living in fear. And that's not meaning that sometimes people associate fear with wisdom. Since I'm on social media, I might as well hit this. Just because I don't uh, fellowship with you every day doesn't mean I'm afraid. Uh, sometimes you got to protect your anointing in such a way to where you know the enemy is slipping up on folk because they're trying to have fear acting like they, if, I, if I don't do a certain thing I'm afraid of God I'm not afraid of God but I got to protect the anointing and move when God say move because I'm pushing for the revival I'm getting ready to prophesy now there will be a revival that will come from this I know I'm talking to somebody right now. There will be a revival to where we're going to see miracles like we've never seen before. But the Lord said, I have to shut some things down to see what you're going to push for me. You'll still get your new house. You'll still get your job. I'll still cancel your debt. But you need to first get your priorities in order. And the priority you need to understand, I am nothing without the power. Oh my God, I need the power of God. Yes, we have plenty of songs. Yes, we have plenty of messages. You can go on YouTube and Facebook and find millions of words. But the question now becomes, does the power exist in your house? Does the power exist in you? I'm pushing for the power. I'm pushing for the power. The reason why I came to New Heart tonight is to let somebody know that if you're pushing for things, you still can stay weak. If you're pushing for stuff, you still can stay weak. But if you're pushing for the power, that means you're getting ready to know him. I ain't got nobody going to help me now. Paul said, he said, that I might know him lord have mercy and the lord dealt with me he said there are a lot of people call him but they don't know him everybody saying jesus don't know him everybody worshiping on sunday morning don't know him everybody that's got a title don't know him but what makes you know him is when he is the only thing you pushing for now y'all not going to like what I'm going to say. You can think you know people in your family and don't know them. Lord have mercy. You thought you knew your co-worker until they lied on you. Lord have mercy. Y'all ain't going to like me. Y'all ain't going to like me now. You can think you know your spouse. Oh God, I ain't got nobody now. But you don't know somebody until you have to fellowship with some suffering. You never know someone until something does not go right. Well, it's quiet now. You don't know him. You don't know him. Paul said that I know him. That I know him. That I know him. That I know him. I know him. I'm not a pastor to know you as members. But I got to know him so you can know him. So many people are leading people that don't know him. They know his name. They know the schematics of church. I've been around the church all my life, but that don't mean I know him. When you really want to know Jesus, you got to understand that something has to change. You got to have him in you for you to know him. 
It's a lot of people been in church, but the church hasn't been in them. Oh, I'm talking right now. And the reason why some people can't function, and then there's a, there's a theology right now that's going out that I'm somewhat having a problem with, that I, I, got to, I got to be able to know him. I got to be able to fellowship. And there's nothing wrong with fellowship. I believe in the fellowship of the, of the saints. But you, there's a lot of people don't even know each other. Why they've been, they've been going to church 20 years and still don't know him. Somebody said, well, how you know that? Because if you knew him, you would tithe. I ain't got nobody going to help me. If you knew him, you wouldn't cuss out your neighbor. Oh, let me get up out of here now. If you knew him, you would love your neighbor like you love yourself. If you knew him, you wouldn't be selfish. If you knew him, you would forgive. If you knew him, you could lie on Bishop Butts. If you knew him, you will keep your mouth closed when the Holy Ghost say hush. Yes. Oh my God. Sometimes you know his name, but you don't know him. Yes. Paul said that I might know him. Not that I know church. There's so many people that learn ministry. But I done found out you can love ministry and don't love God. You can love what you do, but you don't love who you're supposed to serve. Some people only serve for recognition. Don't recognize them and find out. You're going to need the sheriff department to find them. But if you love him and if you know him, you push him for what he wants you to have. Everybody is supposed to have power. He said, I've dealt to every man the measure of faith. And he also gives you the measure of power. Every Christian is not on the same spiritual level. There's some of you watching right now, you might be a new Christian. But it doesn't mean you don't have to be a powerless Christian. Powerless is not based upon longevity. Just because you've been saved 50 years, that don't automatically mean you got power. Because there are some spiritual Christians who are adult in being saved, but they are newborn in personality. You got to know him. And the Lord said to me, and I know this might not be a popular message. I know you two want to promise you a house and Facebook want to promise you a car and, and they want to promise you most, so many things, but I'm here to let you know stuff means nothing if you don't have God's power because the devil is not going to visit your house to ask you what your title is. The enemy is not trying to kill your child. Right now, the target of this world now is our children. Yes, sir. The enemy is trying to snatch a whole generation yes, right in front of us. But this is the time when families could not pray together. Oh. Mm -hmm. You better get Princess and Pookie and Ray Ray. Yes. And y'all better get on your knees and lay hands and spread some heart. Yes. Lord have mercy, they're talking about sending our kids back to school. I don't know what we're going to do about that, but one thing I know, there has to be power. There has to be power over our children to where our children will be able to function in a society that is thinking for them who are powerless. How do you function in society when nobody around you has power? How do you function when nobody around you knows God? What do you do when folk are going to service and they're still leaving in the same spiritual condition because the focus of the kingdom has to get back to the basics and there are three basics that we have to get back to the word prayer and true worship the word prayer and true worship Say it again right now. The word. The word. Prayer. Prayer. And true worship. And true worship. If the enemy was coming in your neighborhood and tried to come in your house, there's so much prayer that's already there. There's so much word that's already there. Yes, sir. Until the devil cannot even enter into your doorway because this is a power-filled house. Yes, sir. Bishop, this is somewhat bothering me now because we're blaming things on the devil 
that the devil didn't do. Yes, sir. The devil can't take prayer out of school. All right. Uh-oh, y'all ain't gonna like me. Yes, sir. Because the Bible told me I can send a word. Yes, sir. The Bible told me I can pray over my child yes. <laughs> and put prayer on the child. Yes. And when my child goes to school, yes, if sir. they go, I'm not an advocate for whatever trying to tell you what to do, but in the event your child goes anywhere, and you lay hands on your child. Prayer going to go with that child. Oh, I ain't got nobody going to help me right now. Uh, somebody got to push for the power. And the problem in the kingdom that I saw as I get ready to finish this up shortly is we were pushing for fame. Even the church has been guilty of pushing for notoriety. We're pushing to be seen. We're pushing in competition to see who has the biggest congregation. Come on. We're pushing for popularity. Yes, sir. And God said, wait a minute now, I got to, to kind of do something different now because the church done got to react like the world. Yes, sir. See, the world will dislike whoever's number one on the billboard. <laughs> yeah, the world, the world will start hating. They'll, they'll start saying things about the person who seems to be on top. And sometimes a church is the same way. Just because you have thousands of members don't mean you have a thousand watts of power. Oh, I know I'm talking right here. Power is not based upon numbers. Because I read in the scripture, one can chase a thousand. And two can chase 10,000. It lets me know that the power is not in the numbers. It's in the Holy Ghost by which we pray to God. Of course, Bishop, being a wise bishop, has this, this holy convocation the way he has it. But it's enough of us in here, just a few of us at the command of the man of God. But there's enough of us in here to drive out the witch and the warlock. While we sitting right in here tonight And I'm prophesying that in your house right now Whatever imp around your house Whatever decree around your house Whatever hex around your house There's enough coming from this holy convocation There's enough in here right now That can drive back anything out your house uh, I want you to shout in me Shout with me and just say It's got to get up out of here Mm -hmm. it's, got to, it's got to leave my house because I'm pushing for the power. Now, if I'm going to get power, there's something I have to do. There's three things I have to remember if I'm going to have power. I first must understand power is a process. Somebody say power is a process. Now, now, now you got to understand that the, the text of Isaiah 43 is when Babylon had took rule and rulership over the children of Israel. And they had strayed from God into another land. He said, behold, I'm going to do a new thing now. God said, I'm going to do a new thing, but I want you to understand this new thing. He said, if you're going to come back to me, sometime you got to find out, I got to make a way in the wilderness. Did y'all catch it? In other words, sometimes going back to God and getting the power means you got to go through a wilderness experience. Sometimes you got to go through some humility. Sometimes the reason why we go through struggles is to move pride. Sometimes it is to take arrogance out of your consciousness. So once you get your miracle, you won't be arrogant once you get it. There's some of us been through enough to where we cannot be arrogant. There's some of us been through some stuff to where we can't be prideful because we remember what we went through just to get the power. I wonder, am I talking to anybody right now? Some of you have been saying, Pastor McKnight, why am I going through so much hell in my life? Why am I dealing with so many circumstances in my life? He said, because God said, I'm going to let you know I'll give you a road in the wilderness. When everything is around you, wild animals and beasts, I'm still going to let you make it. Have some of you already gone through some stuff that other people would have lost their mind if they would have went through what you went through? But you was able to get through it because getting back wasn't enough. You had to come back with some power. I'm prophesying right now, somebody's about to have a comeback with power. Somebody's about to have a breakthrough with power. You didn't go through all of that hell to stay the same. It was because you had power. 
Oh Lord, let me get out of here. Bishop, I wasn't intending to do all of this. They say you're not supposed to preach with a COVID-19, but the devil is a liar. There's the process and then you got to learn how to forget the past. You got to remember to forget. Lord have mercy. Even though your enemies want to remember everything that doesn't happen in your life, you got to remember to forget. They try to bring up stuff that happened in your high school days. They try to bring up the fact when you got arrested. They got to bring up the fact when you got a DUI. They try to bring up everything in your life and you need to go over to them and say what you're talking about. Because the Lord told me I got to remember to forget. Paul said this one thing I do. If I'm going to have power, I got to silence my haters from trying to make me feel weak. I'm prophesying to somebody who has been threatening you about your past. Your power is getting ready to consume their memory. Because the more they remember, the higher you're going to go. I'm trying somebody right now to tell you, push. Push. Push for the power. So, Pastor McKnight, as I finish this, the question now becomes, what do I do when I feel weak? What do I do, man of God, when nothing's going right? What do I do when it seems like my back is against the wall? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do when my friends have decided they don't want to accept me as a friend on Facebook? What do I do when the hater blockers have had a meeting about me and decided that all of them were going to be against me? What do I do when church folk begin to roll their eyes at me and we not even in church what do I do when my money done got funny what do I do when my job is about to close what do I do when they telling me there's no more stimulus checks after this what do I do when it looks like there's nothing else for me to do but get on my knees the Lord say I start closing doors to open new ones Anytime you go through a shutdown in the spirit realm, God is getting ready to give you a lift up. And that's where the church is right now. He's testing us, Bishop, to see if you will push for the power. I've been telling Sanctuary of Praise this. I said the one thing that I will not allow to happen is to go through a world pandemic and come out the same way. I will not go through this and still have the same type of power or we have not learned from this experience and I believe the reason why some things are delaying is there's still not a sound in the earth that really wants God I think people are crying but they're crying for themselves I think people are crying but they're crying for their situations we need some folk to say you know what no matter what's going on in my life, I need to hear God from me. I need God to hear from me. I need God to hear from me. I need God to hear me cry out to him and don't want a house. I need God to hear from me and don't want a new car. I need God to hear from me and not hear about my light bill. He's already told me he's going to supply all my needs. I need a sound to God to say, you know what, God? If you don't do nothing else, do one thing for me. Give me power. Bishop, I don't know who's watching me on YouTube. I don't know who's watching us on Facebook. But I want you to watch what God is getting ready to tell you. Your life is too important to not have power. You are too important to stay the same. We got to push for the new thing. And the new thing says we have to have new power. Somebody needs to see your transformation. Somebody in your family needs to see that the old you is not here anymore. I believe that when the church come back together, whenever that is, I believe that there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost to where our children gonna be speaking in tongues. I believe there'll be a season that when the child go to school, the child will lay hands on the teacher. 
and say my mama and my daddy taught me how to pray I ain't got nobody gonna help me now I need somebody that's gonna shout in this room power I need somebody to go open their mouth and say power now when you're at your home I want you to make it up in your mind like Bishop said a few moments ago I want you to put power in every room power in your driveway Bishop, I wanted to do something else. I wanted to be able to just deal with Isaiah. But the Lord said to me, he said, tell them that the power for the new thing can't be their old way. You can't expect something new with the same behavior. You can't expect another anointing praying the same way. But if God is going to get glory out of your life, you got to push for the power. And there's somebody in here right now. It seems like you're not winning the battle. But God told me to tell you if you just push. Somebody say, well, how do I push? You push not based upon C sharp or A flat. You push based upon what's in your spirit. You push and you cry out if nobody's there praying but you. You push with your praise you push with your prayer life if you want a new thing you gotta push for it if you want God to open up a brand new door you gotta push for it and if there's anybody here in my range that hears my voice I dare you to push to say I might have done what they said I've done but I'm not who they say I am I'm going to push, I'm going to push until my mind change. I'm going to push until my children change. I'm going to push until my money change. I'm going to push until my church change. I, I'm going to push until new seasons come. I'm going to push until new doors are open. I, if they lie on me, I'ma still push. If they talk about me, I'ma still push. If they try to shut me down, I'ma still push. If the repo man come get my car, I'm still gonna push. If my job give me a pink slip, I'm still gonna push. When I get an eviction notice, I'm still gonna push. When my mortgage get behind, I'm still gonna push. When COVID try to come into my family, that's when I'ma say the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, and push. And let the devil know that no weapon formed against me is gonna prosper right in your house right on facebook right on youtube open up your mind and tag somebody and say push we about to get stronger push we still gonna win push when the doctor said no push when you didn't get a miracle report that was favorable Push, push, something's pushing me, telling me to tell you to forget those things which are behind you and reach to those things before you. And what you need to do is look at somebody and say, wipe those tears and push. Get up. up and push because what the devil meant for evil God 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 gonna give you a new thing touch your body look him in the face and say God gonna give us a new thing push pushing a mother Look at your children and say you're going to eat. Push. 
watching us by way of social media you're saying pastor what's the use to me pushing every time I push something else happens I want to tell you why something happens every time you push because you're closer than what you think I heard the Lord say tell them if they can just push one more time I hear the Lord say tell them if they can just pray one more time if they could just worship one more time because right now you got to push just to keep your sanity you got to push just not to be brought up into this world system that says I've been through the process I had to deal with my past but I can't give up my purpose simply what the Lord told me is the enemy wants you to quit he just simply wants you to quit and I broke down quit Quit means quietly, unveiling, inadequate tenacity. Q is quietly. U is unveiling. I is inadequate. T is tenacity. It's when you reveal you didn't have what it takes. And Bishop, we have to be careful how we just go with people say God doing the new thing. The question is, did he do the last thing for you? Or did you quit before he did it? A lot of times people want to say, he's getting ready to shift me. But God is not just an author. He's an author and a finisher. Don't be trying to make it look like God quit. Sometimes we quit on God, acting like God. God don't change his mind when he promised you something. If he promised it to you, don't quit on the promise. There's some people right
right now, I'm telling you to pick it back up and believe again. Yeah. Get your dreams again. Yeah. Go back and get your ministry. This, this pandemic can't stop your ministry. And the reason why he said, Thou shalt not have any other God before me. Sometimes God is spelled J O B. Somebody missed what I just said then. Sometimes God is not spelled G O D in your life. Sometimes God is spelled J O B. It's your job that's your God. Sometimes God is spelled D E G R E E, degree. Y'all ain't caught what I just said. Sometimes God is called car, C-A-R. And sometimes anything ahead of him that you worship more than him, he has to move it. I challenge every person as I get ready to pray for you to do one thing for me, but mostly do it for God. Push for the power. When I was raised in the early church, the main thing before you could say you were saved is you had to have the Holy Ghost. And you couldn't just walk up there and just say, I confess with my mouth, believe in my heart. Lord, thank you for saving me. No, no, no. We had to do what we call tarry. That's why we call it holy convocation. They, you had to call that name Jesus. I'm here to let you know you can't be saved without Jesus. If the power was in our homes, then when we come to the house of God, we'll have power in the church. Yeah. Just because we call it church don't mean power is automatically there. It's the people in the church that God puts his power in. Yeah. Yes, his presence could be in the house of God, but his power is supposed to be in us. So somebody here right now, wherever you are, I want you to do this as I get ready to pray for you. And that is this. Whatever you do, God, give me your power. If I have to lose friends, if I have to, if I have to rethink everything about my life, I know that if I have your power, I can make it. I'm going to say this to everybody that's on Facebook and YouTube and New Heart Ministries and Sanctuary Praise Ministries and wherever Kingdom Church is watching you make sure of one thing that you be a kingdom minded person that the man or woman of God by which you serve and the church by which you serve in that you are not the weakest link when it comes to power I need your power God Power is more than a jump and a shout. Power is more than dancing to fast music. Power is when the devil fully understands that you're not intimidated by him. Power is when you don't allow religious laws to stop the Holy Ghost from operating in your life. I get ready to pray for you I feel the heart of repentance tonight of somebody just saying God forgive me for being distracted forgive me for wasting time when I could have been more powerful I will spend three or four hours on social media and five minutes talking to you Forgive me that I'm trying to be accepted by people and forget about being loved by God. I need to push for the power. If they don't call you by your title, sooner or later they'll find out that the power is in your life. Sometimes people get offended. But I found out the prophet don't even have honor in his own country. It's a lot of people didn't like Jesus, but they couldn't deny his power. So 
But right now, I'm going to pray for you that the power of God takes over you. You got the power to reach family members in other cities and states. I got friends in the Caribbean. I got friends in the Bahamas. I got friends in Jamaica. I got friends in Haiti. And I might not can get there now, but I can pray and the power can get there. I have family members in New York. I have people that all over this country that I know. And the power doesn't necessarily mean I can walk in the room and lay hands on them, but we can send a word to them. The Lord has just told me from this message tonight, somebody's giving up a drug addiction. Somebody's giving up something that has been causing them to struggle. I want you to know that the struggle is over. Not just because Pastor McKnight says it, the struggle is over because the power is about to hit your life. Put down those pills. There's a whole lot for you to live for. It's a Friday night and some of you is being acting like this is the last month I'm going to take this. This is the last night I'm going to take this. And the Lord is saying to tell you that your future is brighter than your past. I say your future is brighter than your past. Father, we thank you that your power will overtake us. That your power will put us back on focus. We're nothing without your power. But God, tonight we need your Holy Spirit to live inside of us in such a way to our lives will walk in the power of God. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood of Jesus is against you. And, and in the name of Jesus, every camouflage demonic foe is canceled in the spirit realm. Sharpen our eyes of discernment and give us more of your power, God. Bless this man and this woman of God. Bless this ministry. Bless this church. Bless the kingdom of God to where people don't know us by our names only, but they know us by our power. I thank you right now that our identity should be walking in the power of God. I come against every weakness. I come against every struggle. I come against all forms of bondage. Somebody hasn't been able to get over their past, but I decree tonight that the past has been passed. And I speak victory in the name of Jesus. I decree it done, and we give you praise, God. And we give you honor that right now, every shackle, every yoke, and every chain has been broken. And right now, we're walking in new power. We thank you, God, now that we're getting ready for the new thing, but we're going to have new power with the new thing. And we command it to be done in Jesus name. I want you to start praising God right there from your house. I want you to open your mouth and give God glory and bless him for who he is. Hallelujah. There's something that I want you to do for me. You got to understand that you just shouldn't have power to, to live. You got to have power to give. And sometimes I remember I told our church, I said, even before this pandemic hit, I said, there's something coming to to America and you better make sure you have seed in the ground because there will be a famine. I told them this in January. I said, get ready. A couple of weeks later, I told our school teachers before this even happened, I said, hey, our Bishop, I said, y'all need to get ready to start teaching from home virtually. The Lord told me you're gonna have to teach from home. And then everything starts shutting down. See, sometimes God will give you a word before a season hit. And I'm saying to you right now tonight, those of you that have a new heart, those of you have a new mind, those of you that want new power, you can't pay for power, but you can sow into things that you want God to do in your life. So there's some of you right now, there's online giving on the screen right now. You can do it by way of PayPal. You got cash app that you can send to New Heart Church, NH, dollar sign NHCC1328, dollar sign NHCC1328 or you can click on online giving that's on your screen. Bishop, you know I never come to your house and don't leave a seed, I'ma leave it right here and let you know that there is new power getting ready to come in your life. And I want you to hear this before I turn this back over into our presider, Bishop Butts. I want you to understand this, that you might not have a whole lot of money right now, but you have new power. You might be jobless, 
but you have new power because God is getting ready to do a new thing in your life but the new thing requires new power so I want you right now wherever you are not to leave from off this I want you to honor this man of God by which we respect and we honor New Heart Ministry entire fellowship the overseer I want Bishop George Bucks to come back and he's going to close out this this amazing I want to thank all of you I want to thank all of you for tuning in on Facebook and YouTube, knowing that God is doing great and awesome things. So we give God a praise. We give him a praise and know that he is worthy to be praised. Come on, give God a hand. Praise for our bishop. Come on, put your hands together for pastor. Come on, come on, put them hands together for this great man of God that has preached out of his soul. Elder Duke says, the old folks used to say, did not our hearts burn? As the man of God brought the word of God and we have been blessed tonight and we thank God for you tonight and I know he's talked about our giving but I want you to give tonight and plant into that word that you heard get a seed get a seed and plant into this word that you heard tonight if God bless you through this word I want you to plant into this word tonight what a word tonight we got to push for power I'm going to preach that out of town. I can't do it here, but we got to push for power. And we thank God for the word of God tonight. And God bless you for being with us all week long. God bless you. God has blessed us through this week to do and to have a wonderful convocation. And what a way to end it, letting us know that we need to push for power. Amen. God bless all of you. And from the first lady and I, we love you and we appreciate you for how you support New Heart Ministries, how you support New Heart Christian Center. But if this word has blessed you tonight, plant a seed. Plant a seed. You see your, the way you can give on the screen. This was a mighty word tonight. Plant into the man of God that you have heard tonight. Amen. God bless you. We're getting ready to stand. Old song says, God be with you. Oh, God. God be with you. I'm singing. God. God be with you. Until we meet. encounter let me tell you this has been an experience I will never forget this has been an experience that I will always remember the devil thought he had us this year you hear me the devil thought he had us in 2020 but little did he know that the Lord created a way for us to come to you 
virtually so that you could still have your holy convocation experience with new heart ministries in this year 2020 and that you could still receive the blessings of the lord we had an awesome time this evening with pastor jonathan mcknight and we thank you for tuning in with us during this virtual encounter 2020 with new heart ministries and this holy convocation on this year we thank you. We bless you for tuning in. Our prayers are always with you. Now, if you would like to plant a seed, if you would like to give into our ministries, you can do so by giving to our cash app at NHCC1328. That is the dollar sign, NHCC1328. You can also give by PayPal at newheart1328 at yahoo.com. Again, PayPal at newheart1328 at yahoo.com. Be a blessing, sow a seed, and watch the Lord work it out for you. This has been our virtual encounter, Holy Convocation 2020 New Heart Ministries. We want to see you next year.